Good afternoon. A massive, massive weekend of football, the upshot of which is that the Brisbane Lions will play Richmond on Thursday, the 1st of September, to open up the finals. Melbourne will play Sydney on the Friday night. On Saturday afternoon, Geelong will take on Collingwood. Both teams, of course, with the double chance, Fremantle to take on the Western Bulldogs on the Saturday night. One of the most incredible games of the season yesterday at the MCG in front of more than 88,000 fans. I was on the ground afterwards for the news. An incredible atmosphere. Collingwood winning by a point to create the double chance. You couldn't make it up. Carlton with, I think, 54 more contested possessions. They're up by 25 points. The Blues playing for a final spot at the five-minute mark of the final quarter. They kick zero goal six. Carlton in the top eight every round except for the last for the first time since 1977, which incidentally was Carlton. It's a quirky fact. The Blues premish, the Blues finals drought continuing since 2013. An amazing, amazing game of football. In terms of the fallout, well, I guess Carlton will be working through that. They had plenty of opportunities, created plenty of opportunities. They piled on the pressure with eight goals in the third term, but in the end sort of handed the game to the Pies who were uh, who put the Blues under absolutely massive pressure. I guess there'll be discussion about the, the, the use of the forward line at Carlton. I know they go to Mackay and Kurnow a lot, but in terms of the way they go, there'll be some discussion surrounding that. Kurnow played on. Maybe he should have uh, allowed time for them to set up behind the ball. Kurnow's pass to Durden didn't work. Durden didn't hit out Mackay. You can break it all down, but it was absolutely incredible. I noticed Cripps was trying to break all the tackles again, which he had to given Sam Walsh's absence. But boy, there'll be some discussion points as far as Carlton's concerned. No doubt they'll be improved next year. It was a very, very impressive performance. But the Pies, their role continues. An incredible stat. They've now won 11 games this year, Collingwood, by 12 points or less. It's absolutely unbelievable. But in terms of the talking points from the weekend, want to discuss Essendon, want to discuss Zorko, and also want to discuss some of the key injuries going to the finals in terms of some of the champion players from the big clubs. The Bombers held a board meeting yesterday at the Jet Base, which is Paul Little's Jet Base near Essendon's Tullamarine headquarters. It's an impressive Jet Base. It's full of unbelievable private jets, but I'll save that story for another day. They've formally parted company with Ben Rutten, who I understand overnight has now a lot of job offers in the form of, I think, of an assistant or football roles at other clubs. There's enormous respect for Ben Rutten in the competition. I think a number of clubs will emerge um, soon. Uh, that we'll hear about offering Rutten a job. Obviously not a senior coaching job, but uh, a good job. Rutten attracted a good payout, I understand, up to $600,000. He was entitled to it, had a year to go on his contract. Based on the press conference from yesterday, some key takeouts where David Barham spoke as well as Xavier Campbell when they parted company with Rutten post that board meeting. It appears that Campbell, the CEO, is safe for now. He did fight for Rutten, I understand, in the meeting yesterday. It was a robust discussion but I think Essendon sort of come together in a sense over the weekend and Xavier Campbell's safe. They're searching Essendon for an experienced coach. That's the way they're leading at the moment. In terms of their review, um, they've pretty much guaranteed Josh Marnie safe, the football boss, for now. Certainly for the next three or four months, they work through these key findings. It is interesting, Dorothy Hisgrove, who's a top HR executive who's on the Essendon board, is helping out with that review. An incidental fact, which Essendon mentioned when Dorothy came on their board, she's a Pies supporter. So the person in charge of Essendon's review is, in fact, a Collingwood supporter, notwithstanding her uh, obviously immense skills in that HR and review space. In terms of their coach search, as I mentioned, they want to go for an experienced coach. Now, on Saturday, I went up to Canberra to watch James Hurd coach the Giants and spoke to him a couple of times off camera. I got on pretty well, very well with Erdy. He wasn't in a position to comment regarding his coaching ambitions, given the fact that Rutten was in the job. He explained to me that he knows the position that Rutten was in on Saturday, has been there before and didn't want to exacerbate or worsen the situation for Ben Rutten. It's my understanding that Hurdy is considering whether he wants to return to coaching and throw his hat into the ring over the next week or so. And I think we'll hear from more, hopefully, from Hurdy over the next week or so. But in terms of uh, Joe Watson's comments in regards to Hurd, it was interesting on Seven's coverage on Saturday night. This is what Joe Watson had to say, who's highly influential behind the scenes amongst the past players at Essendon, in regards to his view on whether Hurdy should return and coach the Bombers. Well, I don't see how that, that would work. I mean, I'm not sure what James's mentality is, whether he wants to come back into the football club, but... but to quote the great Tony Soprano, remember when is the lowest form of conversation. You can't keep looking back. They need to formulate a plan, stick to it, get the right people in the right roles and back them in. 
Now, that was Joe Watson speaking on Seven's coverage on Saturday night. Now, of course, Ross Lyon was on Triple M in his regular spot on Sunday afternoon. I gather Ross's strong impression, you'll hear here from Ross shortly, is that Essendon is going after Heard. Now, this is going to be an impediment to Essendon potentially getting Ross, if indeed they go after him, because it seems like Ross Lyon is of the view that the Kevin Sheedy faction, and remember, Sheed's crossed the floor and supported the new majority on the board, but it's Ross's view that they're going after Heard in the background. This was Ross on Triple M footy yesterday. Because the back room, and I understand the push, and within the industry there's a lot of chatter about Heard, and I think he could do it. But Kevin, that was a calculated... He crossed the floor one day next, to me, turned on Barham, and because it cost any chance of Clarkson... To pave the way for Heard. Well, that's my read on the situation. So that's Ross's read on the situation. Ross certainly hasn't thrown his hat into the Essen ring as yet, and clearly it would have been impediment if he were to chase Ross, because I think Ross is of the opinion that Essen behind the scenes is going after Heard. I ran into Sheeds incidentally yesterday at the game at the uh, Carlton Collingwood President's Function, Carlton's President's Function, and I said, Sheedy, and he looked behind me. I said, aren't you meant to be in a board meeting? And he goes, don't talk about the board meeting. He gave me a bit of a, not a clip, I get on well with Sheeds, but that's what happened yesterday. Now, it's my strong impression from Essendon, well, you could say sources, that they're certainly looking at Ken Hinckley and Adam Simpson as their go-tos in, form, in the form of an experienced coach. I was on air this morning with David Kosh, and I put the interest in Hinckley to Koshy. This was his response. And the word overnight, Koshy, is they will certainly sound out your man, Ken Hinckley, as oh. well, who has a year to run on his oh. contract at Port Adelaide. Can Tom, I ask you a question? Uh, tell them they're dreaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... And why would Ken go, go to a club like that? Well, they might such offer him turmoil. a four or five years contract. They'll, they'll sort themselves out. Yeah, no, nah, tell them they're dreaming. Well, the clear issue there is that Koshy's obviously got Ken on a contract next year, which obviously they want Ken to honour. Uh, hasn't things changed in the space of a couple of weeks? Although Koshy has been reasonably consistent. But Essendon could go to Ken and offer him a four or five year deal. Having said that, if Ken's contracted, I can't imagine Koshy's going to let him go. So there's going to be some interesting discussions in that regard, obviously, in the next... Uh, you know, a couple of weeks, uh, no doubt, behind the scenes at Port Adelaide. But that was Koshy's response this morning. So where does that all leave Essendon? Um, in summary, and just to editorialise slightly, I think Essendon need to decide whether they're going to go after Heard or not. They may as well decide now because it undermines their approach to all the other coaches who won't take them seriously if they are seen to be sort of thinking about Heard in the background. They also need to unite. That's absolutely clear. The danger also is if they chase Hinkley or Adam Simpson over the next month and they're not united and they're not organised, they'll miss out on those two and be back to square one and possibly end up with an inexperienced coach. And it'll make the board look, well, frankly, a bit stupid having regards to the shambolic week over the past week. A case in point was their approach to Clarkson. David Barham, the new president, went and approached Clarko. That's not going to work to get one of these top coaches. You've got to go with David Barham. You've got to go with Tim Watson. You've got to go with Simon Madden. You've got to go with the new president. I mentioned the new president. You've got to go with all the various parties, Adrian Dodoro, Josh Money, everyone on the same page, and make an impassioned plea to the new coach, United. And that's the issue for Essendon at the moment, which probably will involve cleaning up the board. It involves a whole host of issues that starts with their review. The fallout continues from Dane Zorko's sledge towards Harrison Petty on Friday night. It reduced Petty to tears at three-quarter time. Brisbane and Zorko promptly apologised. Melbourne accepted that apology on Saturday morning. The AFL looked at the situation on Saturday and was happy not to proceed any further. It still looks like the AFL is not happy to proceed any further. What's changed today is the Herald Sun has printed what Zorko allegedly said. It was of a highly personal and distasteful um, manner in I think anyone's view and there's now debate about Zorko's captaincy certainly beyond this season and what Brisbane should do in regards to this I think Zorko will probably speak today um, you know Brisbane's an incredible club with enormous integrity it does seem strange that Zorko would say that and you can add, if you want to refer to the comments go and look at them in the Herald Sun I, I don't understand who would say that there's a huge distinction between a funny or witty sledge and something as personal as this but I guess from the AFL's perspective, it's sort of a can of worms because players do sledge and it's absolutely no excuse. I'm not making an excuse. I'm just reporting facts. My understanding is that Zorko was also being sledged himself in regards to a couple of, well, one personal matter and one matter in regards to his appearance and fitness on Friday night. Is that an excuse? No, I'm just reporting 
what was told to me. And I don't know if that was Petty or another player. But as I said, it's no excuse. And it's an interesting discussion point now about sledging in the game. As I said, there's a big distinction between a witty or funny sledge and something as personal as what Zorko said to Petty on Friday night. A player update. It's all about the finals. And if your team's in the finals, you want to know if the big names are playing. I'll start with Tom Papley. I've been in contact with Sydney. I think it's a low-grade concussion at this stage. They're confident at this stage you'll pass the 12 days of the various protocols and be right for Friday week. Taylor Adams is battling a groin issue, which is a concern. It's my understanding he's touch and go. We'll hear from him on 7 News tonight. He's certainly playing in a degree of pain, but does believe he'll play in at least one of Collingwood's finals. Hopefully for the pie's sake, that's against Geelong, but that's no guarantee at this stage. Jeremy Cameron is trying to progress from his hamstring. It's only injured that hamstring once this year, but three times last year. It sounds like Cameron will get one goal at it. So that's the issue for Geelong when they roll the dice on Jeremy Cameron, when they do it in the first final, we'll try and get through to a prelim and then go from there. Dustin Martin was in at the club today. It's a player's day off. He continues to train behind the scenes. He trained well on Saturday. Nothing certain, but I'm told it's looking good after another week off, according to the Tigers. Scott Pendlebury was on Triple M this morning with uh, Marty. He had a scan this morning, I think on a knock to the back of his head, but again, we've got more details on the news in regards to that zone. I think it was precautionary, and Pendles is a OK. And just briefly, Tasmania, the AFL's pushing hard to try and get Tasmania and a dedicated team up in the background. I know they're lobbying some other presidents now pretty hard, so it's going to be interesting to see that. Again, though, the clubs haven't seen any type of formal proposal. They want one. Um, Todd Viney was in at North Melbourne on Friday afternoon. Again, a pointer that he'll have a role, a prominent one, perhaps as coaching director or even the boss of football under Alastair Clarkson. A hugely exciting announcement for North, of course, on Friday, landing Alastair Clarkson. And the Giants coaching search just finally. I understand an an announcement in regards to their coach is imminent. It's between Uze, McVeigh, and also Kingsley. I think Uze is the favourite. One of the considerations there, of course, is the impact on Melbourne and Richmond, I think we'd be happy to retain Kingsley and Uze during the finals if and when the Giants announce that particular person. There's a lot of work to be done at the Giants on their list, contracts, going forward, assistant coaches, all those types of things. Ideally, one of those coaches would start straight away. So expect an announcement from the Giants, certainly I think in the next 48 hours, regarding their coach. It's been a massive, massive news day. Plenty of stories developing this afternoon. I'll have all the latest on Thursday and Friday. Thanks again for joining my podcast, Triple M, Racks Football. That was Tom Brown's news. Come back every Monday, Thursday and Friday for more and subscribe to Triple M Footy on Listener or wherever you listen to get all our podcasts throughout the season. For Ream Hot Water and McDonald's, Triple M rocks footy.